It is not Wednesday, my dudes. It is, in fact, Friday. I hate that they keep revealing characters now on a Friday. But yeah, that means it's time for another First Thoughts Initial Impressions Epic 7 video. This one will be on Frida, the newest limited unit that was just shown earlier this morning over on Stove. Apologies in advance for any audio quality issues. I am traveling on the road as I record this, but hey, again, Smilegate decided to drop the character on Friday, not Wednesday. So, you already know the drill. We're going to go over everything about the character and give you my two cents, talk about her stats, skills, some possible endgame equipment builds, uh, do I think she's good, the artifact, all those things you've come to expect in an impressions video. So, let's just get on with it. Take a look now at Frida's S3 animation. Welcome to my water park. May it provide you with many unforgettable memories. Hurry up, Aloha! Hurry, hurry! <laughs> I dare you to underestimate me. Not a super big fan of that animation, or honestly the character's design overall, but that's probably just me. In the English dub of Epic 7, Frida is voiced by Risa May, who in the world of anime, most of you will know her as the current voice of Kamiya Kaoru from Rurouni Kenshin, but I feel like most of my audience will know her as the voice of Lynx from Honkai Star Rail. Moving on to Frida's stats, she is an Ice Soul Weaver of the Taurus Zodiac symbol, which means she shares a stat line with Ray as well as Ahmed. Taking a closer look at her stats, she has 694 attack, 655 defense, 4855 health, 117 speed, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, 0% starting effectiveness, and 30% starting effect resistance. Imprint for the team is attack percentage, and of course, since it's a Soul Weaver, they made it effect resistance as the imprint for herself. As always, before we can talk about how good the character is, we first have to talk about the kit. Let's start with the skill 2 passive Invitation to Fantasy. At the start of the first battle, grants Oasis all ride pass to the caster, as well as the foremost ally. When an ally uses a soul burn, increases the combat readiness of Frida by 15-20%, to 20%, depending on Malagora. Oasis all ride pass is an undispellable buff that says, does not cost any souls to activate the first soul burn, dispelled once the effect is activated. Free to skill 3 is Oasis Land Grand Opening. You acquire two souls upon use, and it has a 4 to 5 turn cooldown depending on Malagora. It dispels one debuff from all allies before increasing the combat readiness of the entire team by 15 to 25% depending on Malagora. Additionally, it increases the attack of all allies for two turns. Lastly, we come to Frida's basic skill, which is Tube Throw. Attack Samu by throwing a tube and increases the combat radius of the ally with the highest combat radius, except for Frida, by 10 to 15%, depending on Malagora. It also has a unique soul burn for the cost of 20 souls. It uses Aqua Ride instead of Tube Throw. Aqua Ride dispels one debuff from all allies and grants a barrier for two turns to the entire team. Barrier strength increases proportional to Frida's max health. So, now that we know the kit, let's talk about the character. Invitation to Fantasy is undoubtedly one of the dumbest passives that I've ever seen in Epic 7. Giving a free soul burn to characters is something that we've had in the past, but those characters are things like Summertime Asseria, where it complements the kit and doesn't completely break the balance of the game. Having your passive give a free soul burn to anyone on the team Smile, <laughs> have you guys lost your damn minds? We're in a meta game right now where soul burns are more broken than they've ever been in the history of this game. We have characters like Ran, Nakwal, and of course New Moon Luna. This passive essentially gives 20 souls to your team, but it gets around Bellion. And I can hear some of you say now, Oh, but Sue... People who play these characters just ban Bellion anyway. Using your pre-ban on Bellion is a very real cost in World Arena. Most strategies have two answers, and by pre-banning Bellion, that means that there is at least going to be one character out there, one answer that will most likely make it through a draft. Pre-banning Bellion is also a huge tip-off to most players that they're about to get rushed down, so they can brace themselves earlier in a draft. Now, you have a character that just bypasses Bellion entirely, which means that as the receiving end of the cleave, 
You have no idea. It is significantly harder now, I feel like, to tell with this character if you're going to be getting cleaved or controlled. If World Arena is not your thing, well, this passive pretty much completely upends the entirety of Flag Arena. Every single Arena defense right now has Bellion. This character just completely gets around it. You just simply New Moon Luna cleave your way to victory. Who cares what the Arena defense is? She beats everything as long as you have access to her Soulburn. Honestly, Guild Wars is probably going to be very similar as well, although Bellion is not quite as common, I feel like, there. This character's passive, to me, feels like a total disaster in the making. Anytime a card or a character just completely bypasses a game's mechanics or just completely invalidates the answers that players use to specific problems, it's kind of a recipe for disaster. Sea Phantom Politis is pretty much the perfect example of this. She was designed to stop fighting spirit, and you could see it just caused a huge ripple effect, and now players don't have the answers that they used to have to specific problems. The people that I've seen so far online celebrating this passive, I feel like you've all never played this game, or at least World Arena, before Bellion actually came out. Book stacking is really not fun for the person on the receiving end, and it's one of the major reasons that I did not really seriously play World Arena until Bellion was released. By the way, as a minor spoiler alert, this character's artifact, which we'll talk about in a little bit, that thing at plus 30 essentially means that this character is worth a minimum of two books. If you count her soul burn, the first one, which is free, it's essentially like giving you 60 souls just in one character. That's going to cause some really, really major feels bads. So if it's not obvious, the passive is broken and makes Frida a definite pull for any PvP player who's looking for an aggressive slant. The rest of the kit is rock solid, but it isn't really anything we haven't seen before. Combat readiness push for the whole team into an offensive buff is something that exists on many characters in many forms at this point. Closer Charles, we have Ahmed, hell, even Dien is essentially this exact same kit somewhat remixed sans the ridiculous passive. Speaking of Dien, the soul burn on skill 1 is essentially just Dien skill 2 stable to an attack skill at the cost of 20 souls. And the base version of the move is just Mediator Quaric Skill 1 before it was buffed a few years back. Nothing else really revolutionary here that we haven't seen before. It's the right amount of support skills for a Soul Weaver to get the job done in 2024, even complete with the weaknesses to Selene and Politis. But even if the character never presses buttons because she's playing against those characters, I think the damage is already done here. Free Soul Burn to anyone just feels way too strong in my opinion. Even if she doesn't set the world on fire in World Arena, I feel like regular Arena is basically going to be in shambles just because of that passive. Given Frida's base stats and the fact that cleavers and control players alike really want her passive, I think that this character's build isn't going to really be too much different than Ahmed. Play her on speed set as fast as you can get her or just tune her with the rest of your team. And since she has that ER imprint, Go ahead, chase that effect resistance if you like. She doesn't really have to be an opener per se. You can basically just kind of use her as a really powerful bridge with the skill 3 that she has. Moving on to the artifact, it is Spotted Mouse Hair Tie. It says at the start of the first battle, you acquire 10 souls, and based on artifact level, you have a 75 to 100% chance to acquire 10 souls after an ally uses a soul burn, but it only triggers once per battle. It's just a different version of Ancient Book. It's just on a Soul Weaver, and it's a limited 5-star, which means that you basically just are going to wail for it. I feel like they already did this, right? Wasn't wasn't Birgitta's artifact pretty much already just Soul Weaver Book? I feel like they've ran out of design space for Soul Weavers as a class, as evidenced by the fact that they just keep remixing Dien's kit over and over and over again, because it's pretty much the most successful one in the history of the game. So they were looking for a new niche, and I don't really think Soul Weavers being the new book holders is a really good look or a good niche to go down. It's just another thing that probably is going to end up needing to get like nerfed or addressed at some point. 
we can't just keep going down this same road over and over and over again. So yeah, not enthusiastic about this character overall, but those are my honest thoughts. Now it's time for me to hear from you. Let me know down in the comment section below, how do you feel about Frida? And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.